Hey everyone, Professor Hank here. So today we're going to talk about protected members of a class, and we're also going to talk about class access specification in C++. Now both of these tools are used for managing different aspects of the inheritance relationship. So let's go ahead and get started with an example. So the first thing we'll do is we'll write ourselves a couple of classes. We'll have a base class, we'll have a derived class. So a base class will be class foo, and it's gonna have private member, which we'll call X, and we'll have, as part of its public interface, we'll have a constructor, so foo, and it'll simply initialize X with zero. Then we'll have an accessor and a mutator. So we'll do void set X, int underscore X, we'll do x equals underscore x and then we'll have our accessor so it get x it's just going to return x all right so that's our base class and then our parent class then we'll have a derived class here so derived uh, class all right so we'll call this class bar and this is going to be public and then we're going to say foo so our bar is a foo and so part of what we're going to talk about today is going to be this thing right here. But before we get there, we have to look at the relationship between bar and foo and its members. Now class bar is going to inherit these methods and be able to manipulate X through the public interface of its parent class, of the base class. So we could have, say, a constructor and have it simply call set X and pass it, say, 8. So we can do this, we can use the setX method because the derived class bar inherited it. Now, why not just directly assign eight to X? So can we just do something like this, X equals eight? And the answer is no. And um, you see that red squiggle right there? Can't do it, won't compile. Because in the base class, X is private. Now, this is where the protected keyword's gonna come in. So we can, create protected members of a class. So let's create a variable called Y. And this is now protected. So protected is kind of like a hybrid of private and public in that the derived class will now be able to access the protected stuff. So I can come in here and I can say, oh, well, Y equals eight, right? I can do this because y is protected so if y is protected that means that the drive class can directly access it but outside code outside of class foo and outside of class bar can't so let's go create a foo object and then try to access directly access its y variable and so we can't see how there's the red squiggle there so outside code can't access it but class bar can so a child class has direct access to its parent class's stuff. So that is what a protected member is. Now, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. If you make a member of that base class protected, yes, the drive class can directly access that member, say a variable, but then that means that the derived class can directly access the variable, thereby bypassing any input validation code that you had in the functions that were part of the base classes member functions. And so this can create a brittle class and somebody who extends your base class can potentially break the class and assign stuff into member variables that shouldn't be there. Now, if you had a public member so let's call this int z. Well, then anybody can access int z. So in my derived class, I could do z equals four, fine. And then in outside code, so say down back here in main, I could do f dot z equals 88. Why? Because z is public. So if it's public, anybody anywhere can access it. If it's private, only the class that the member belongs to can access it. And if it's protected, the class that the member belongs to can access it, but also the derived class can access it as well. So Z is public, okay? So that's the difference between the three types of keywords here. So public, protected, and private. 
Now let's talk about this guy right here. This is the class access specifier, class access specifier. And this controls how members of the base class appear in the derived class. So if you've got a public access specifier here, then the private stuff in the base class is still private in the derived class. So private is private. So you can't directly access it as we demonstrated and protected in the base class is protected in the drive class and public is public. So let's see that play out. And this is just controlling how those attributes, how those members can be accessed through the drive class. So if I come down here and I say, Barbie, now I try to directly access X. I can't do it because X is private in the drive class. That's how it appears in the derived class. Now, what if I do B dot Y equals 88? Still can't do it because Y is protected in the derived class, the derived class. And if I do B dot Z equals 99, no problem because Z is public in the derived class. So that is the behavior of those inherited members when you've got that public access specifier. Now we can also, in addition to using public, we can use protected. So let's see how it changes if we do protected. So if the access specifier becomes protected, then change this keyword right here, protected. So in this case, private stays private, and then protected is protected in the drive class, and then public becomes protected. So, Z is going to become protected, Y is going to remain protected, and X is going to remain private. So let's see that. So now when we try to access bar B, we still can't access the X because X is still private. We still can't access the Y because Y is private. But now we can't access the Z either because the Z is protected in the derived class. Now you can probably see where we're going with this if we make this private. This is our third option private. So if we do private, then guess what? Everything is private. Everything in the derived class is treated as private. So all the members that we inherited here are going to become private. So when we make that private, you can see that we still can't access anything because everything becomes private in the derived class. All right. So now you know how to use protected members in your classes and how class access specification works in C++. Thanks for watching.